this tutorial, we'll be teaching about MIDI in QLab. MIDI in QLab is very powerful. I use it uh, to bring MIDI in, to send MIDI out, MIDI out, and to communicate between all kinds of different applications. You can also use MIDI to talk to sound and light boards. You can use MIDI to trigger external events or other way around, have external sensors trigger stuff in QLab. I actually have it trigger uh, MIDI tones, MIDI notes, which are played through GarageBand as well. So there's a lot of powerful ways you can kind of integrate MIDI into your system. MIDI cues do a lot of things that you wouldn't expect, and they're used for inter-application communication, for triggering things externally, for all kinds of stuff. Uh, we'll cover the basics. First off, a plain old MIDI cue. They're located here, in this bar here. You have um, just a standard MIDI file, and you can just click him in there. And uh, that'll just load a uh, regular MIDI. Uh, the options for MIDI here, under Settings, you can pick MIDI Show Control, a Musical MIDI Note, or a System Exclusive Message. Um, typically, I use MIDI Show Control because I'm triggering lights externally, uh, lighting boards remotely, uh, a lot of that kind of stuff. I'm not using it so much for music. Initially, let's just do a music note. Uh, so you just pick the MIDI music note. You want to pick the note that you want. Uh, channel 1 is fine. Um, you do need to set up a MIDI destination. Initially, when you first turn on your Mac and you haven't used MIDI before, um, there won't be anything available here. It'll say no device. So to, to set that up, you just go to your Applications folder. And buried in there in the uh, Utilities folder, within the Applications folder, is a magical little program called Audio MIDI Setup. And actually, you'll probably get to know this pretty well once you really get into it. Um, it has some very cool things going on. You double click on IAC driver, which will be there. And then you just hit the plus sign here to add this IAC bus. Everything else, the defaults are fine. Hit apply. Make sure device ID is online is checked as well. Uh, so you can just close that once you have that happening and quit this program. If you don't see this window when you first open the program, just go up here to Window, and then Show. Uh, I mean, Show MIDI window because normally the audio window comes up un initially. All right. So when you quit that and you come back into QLab and you go to the gear down here and choose under MIDI, you can then assign MIDI Patch One to be the IAC uh, driver and. Uh, you can put that in any one of these MIDI patches that you want. You just have to make sure that when you do you do that, you assign your MIDI note to be um, one of those available destinations. So now this MIDI note here is going to be sent out. We have note, uh, no, note number 0. Let's put 60, and that's middle C, so it's easy to hear. If you do note 1, it's going to be super low. 127 is going to be the highest, and you can barely hear it. And then velocity, let's go to 127, just so you can hear it at full volume there. Again, I'm going to have to put the 60 in here and tab out of that field to make sure it takes that. When you click on the Go button here, uh, nothing will happen, because it has no MIDI program open to fire that uh, MIDI note. So I'm going to open GarageBand here. And now that we have GarageBand open, uh, I have already set up just a single track with a MIDI instrument in it. I'm going to add one more track, and we'll just add um, a different instrument to it so you can hear the difference between the two things. Um, we'll just pick uh, this planetarium thing. That looks pretty fun. So whatever one is selected, let's say, for example, the grand piano, and we hit go, it'll play middle C on the grand piano. If we switch over and hit the planetarium, I have no idea what this is going to sound like. You'll get something um, perfect. My decade, the great 80s. Um, that is kind of continuing a long time. You could kill that if you wanted to by making a copy of this note. And instead of having the velocity 127, you could take that to uh, zero. 
triggering that will send a zero velocity to this node and stop it. It'll fade out there. So that's one interesting little extra bonus on the MIDI, MIDI lesson that you didn't expect, I bet. Yeah, lots of little eye candy in here you may not be aware of. So another option is to actually play a MIDI file. Um, and to do that, uh, you can either click that and then assign it. I have one already picked here in my uh, demos files. Uh, summertime MIDI file, you just drag that in there. And uh, make sure again that it is assigned, it has a destination assigned to it. We're going to send it back out the uh, IAC driver. And uh, I'll pick the grand piano just because that's kind of what we want it to play this. You know, you'll note that when you do this, you're really not getting all the channels that you would normally get if you had it running in GarageBand for all the different instruments we'd be playing. So instead, all of these instruments are going to be playing through the grand piano itself. Click and go. And away it plays. So not sure of the uh, you know exact usefulness of that. I, uh, I, I haven't used it really for anything. But it is available, so you could, you know, p if you had a MIDI song like that put in there, I think it'd be better off putting it into, um, into GarageBand itself and then, um, you know, using it in there to uh, trigger the full song in GarageBand. You could write an Apple script that would do that. And I'll cover some Apple script stuff later on in some of these tutorials. So... We've got we've gotten this done. We've got this guy, the little single single notes done. Let's move on to doing something with MIDI show control. Um, again, in here we were doing a musical MIDI note. Same with this one. We did just a slightly different uh, different note that was an off to stop a note happening over here. Um, and now we're going to do uh, the MIDI show control. So we're going to pick MSC and we're going to leave it on its default setting, which is uh, MIDI show control. And this is where we're going to choose the information we need. The command format, I'm going to send lighting. So I'm going to be sending out lighting information to a lighting program. Uh, I know for a fact that I like to use device ID 16. It's just, it's just what I use. I kind of feel like it's kind of a little further down the line. Maybe not everyone's going to be doing it. I've never had any problems where someone's jumped onto my device ID or anything. It just kind of assigns that. And then I'm just going to put in a Q number to trigger whatever cue I want in the lighting program. The program that I love and I use for everything right now is called LX Console. And initially it looks incredibly simple and easy, but it's actually a very deep, rich program with lots and lots of uh, possibilities. Um, you basically have a little window here which has your channels. You can have as many as you want. I just put 100 in here for the demo. Um, the main thing you need to worry about is making sure that MIDI in is turned on. And you can do that from the file menu and hit external and then check MIDI in. Um, if this is great, if you don't have this button on here, it doesn't matter. You can still trigger that and get that set up from external, again, MIDI show control in. In preferences, you do want to make sure you tweak that a little bit. And go into the MIDI settings here. And you want to pick the IAC driver. Um, MIDI channel and go MIDI don't matter because we're actually not using MIDI notes. We're going to use MIDI show control to trigger this. And so I've put that at 16, which matches my 16 down here for device ID. Uh, and you can close that out. Uh, I made a couple light cues here. Basically, Q1 is um, just some, some of the lights up uh, right there. Q2 is these guys up, and Q3 is this right here. And so when we go back here, uh, initially this is uh, going to be triggering, we'll have it trigger Q1, and we'll make a copy of that, and we'll have it do, this one will be Q2, and this one will be Q3. And so you'd think when you just click on this, it should now trigger Q1 over here. Uh, oddly, uh, it doesn't work uh, the initial time. What I found you have to do uh, to initially get it to work, and then it'll work every time after that, is you just come in here and you got to click on this uh, little live window button. And it brings up uh, this little interface right here. Just click on any one of these notes, any one of these triggers here and hit uh, 
the go button. And once it fires one of those cues for some reason, it somehow makes that connection. I guess it's to only a new a new setup like this, because now when we trigger this, you'll see that it will fire uh, Q1. So boom, it goes, it fires Q1, has a fade time on it. You can see that happening up here. Now we'll hit uh, Q2, and you can see the transition from Q1 to Q2 happening here in the live window. And the same thing for Q3. There goes Q3, it's fired, and you got good control. So again, you know, you're going to need to bring up this little window. It's located right here uh, in the controller. You can also do uh, window, uh, I'm sorry, view, um, yeah, MIDI, MIDI live is what you're trying to get to come forward. This is the cue sheet here. This is the live window. And uh, anyway, that's what you need to bring up initially when the first setup. Now that we've saved all this, you will not need to do that again. Another cue thing, cool thing that um, that MIDI does, it lets you trigger other cues. So you could trigger things from an external MIDI keyboard or all kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to drop in an audio file. And I'm going to tell it to be have a MIDI trigger associated with it. And we're going to click Yes. A nice thing I like about this is they can have uh, the capture feature, so you don't have to actually know all this information you want. You can just create some kind of note or whatever to trigger that. So um, since we have GarageBand still open, um, if we had triggered, you know, had it trigger from this, it's going to play, you know, a note when it does that. So a simple way around that is we'll put in a new note, and we're going to switch it to MIDI voice message, little MIDI note, and we're going to tell it to be to channel 1, uh, let's go note 0, and velocity 0. So it's going to really do, I don't think you're going to hear it if we hit go. Right, the reason that did that is the default here is note 0, velocity 0. So let's change this just for this demonstration here, we'll put it in as note 1, velocity 0, and when we hit go, nothing will happen. You can't hear a note being triggered in GarageBand because we have a zero velocity. And then to associate this note with turning on this cue, the easiest way, again, I could either increase this one to one, but even simpler, just hit Capture and then go over here and fire that cue. And that will then assign that note to, uh, to this right here, um, which and freakishly, when you look at it, it uh, yeah, it should be it should have been note one. Let's try that one more time. There we go. So note one, velocity zero. So if we click this button, hit go, it's going to play and trigger the cue file. There you go. So lots of interesting stuff from MIDI in QLab. You can do so much more than I'm covering right here, but this should give you a little taste to get you started. All right. Adios, amigos.